going back even further and, and thinking about what might have been in the spot before there was a house there or a building. And think back like what might have been where you are 500 years ago. Who might have been sitting where you are 700, 800, 1,000 years ago? Maybe you can imagine what it might have looked like, this land that you occupy now, before cars and buildings and noise and factories and schools and buses. What animals might have crawled over this earth. And you can bring your hands to your body somewhere, maybe your heart or your belly or your face, or put them together in a prayer, whatever feels most supportive. And feeling into your, your land here, the earth of you, your bones. Feel your bones. Bones feel, you know, we often think of them as these sort of like, like dead things inside of us, like, you know, because we see a skeleton pulled out of the body, but actually bones are very much alive and feeling and growing and listening. They're like little antennas inside our body. How do your bones feel today? And feeling your skin. How does your skin feel? Feeling your heart, your heart, your mind. How does it all feel? And I, I wish for you to just welcome everything, whatever it is that bubbles up in the lake of you, whatever comes to the surface without labeling anything, this is good or this is bad, but just to welcome all the ways that you feel. If you want to join me, we can chant an Aum. You can always join from home. Might leave your hands there or place them together at your heart. Breathing in real big. Oh. And we'll come into a, a child's pose to start. I know not all bodies really fold into that as easily <laughs> as others do and it's really okay so wherever you land with it whether your hips are on your heels or not no matter how close to the floor you get just to come in a way that you really sort of get down on the ground you're gonna really stay kind of close to the ground today and so you could snuggle into some kind of shape that gets you low to the ground and just try to feel all the parts of you that are touching this ground and to make contact that's that's real like you're not just this thing sort of floating on the earth but you're allowing for an intimate contact with the ground an intimate with your ground and by doing so we can keep coming back to this idea of thinking about everyone who walked this ground before us and everyone who might walk in after us in our place in the middle of things in the midst of it all here we are breathing together. And then we'll start with sort of a kind of a kneeling salutation thingy today. So roll your way up. If you need padding under your knees, definitely we'll do a little bit on the knees today. So you could put some padding there, but coming up to standing on your knees, open your arms out wide, lean back a little bit, not much and then wrap them around yourself and fold in like you're just sort of tucking into a little hug and a cradle and then open again, stand up on the knees, open wide. Put the other arm on top as you cross them, rounding your back, folding at the hips, dropping in. And one more time, opening up wide. This time, as you wrap the arms, put the right arm on the bottom, the left arm on the top, 
hold on to yourself, rounding forward, folding at the hips. Now take eagle arms as you come up to kneeling or whatever your version of that is. So it might be that the forearms just come together. Maybe you cross the wrists and touch the palms. Wherever you're at is good. Lift your elbows up a little ways. And then we're gonna make two big circles with the upper body. So going to any direction first, doesn't matter. And just start to circle your way through space. Go a little slower than you're naturally inclined to and try to really feel spaces between your ribs as you move. When you reach the top of that one circle, then you'll go the other way. We're gonna have in a, a luxurious way today. Let's move luxuriously. And as you reach the top of that circle again, you're gonna reach your arms up so that the elbows uncross, but keep the wrists crossed and bring your palms together. So arms are up, wrists are crossed, palms are touching, and take a side bend to any side, doesn't matter. Use the pressing of the palms together to sort of irradiate that sensation all the way down from your hands to your toes. Can you feel when you press the palms together how it starts to light up the arms and then it moves down, it might light up the chest and the belly and then come on up and go the other way. And you're still pressing palms together with your wrist cross, finding that sideways vibe and we're pressing the rib cage into the skin of the side body there. Massage the inner skin on your side body with your ribs and your breath. And then come on up, come on up, keep your wrist cross, interlace your hands up there. So just wrapping the fingers together with the wrist cross, bring the arms straight down in front of your heart. And then keeping the arms like that, can you just roll your wrists around a couple times in each direction? This was a funny thing. The first time I tried this, my brain was just like, nope. <laughs> and I noticed it took like four times before my brain would get on board with the situation. And then keeping your arms like that, we're going to take a little bit of a cat cow here. So kind of lean back, tailbone under, round your back, drop your head between your upper arms. And then keeping the arms straight, but just pull the chest forward. Let your pelvis reach forward, lift your chest up. You can even lift your chin, teensy amount of a back bend. Take as much as you need and do that again. Leaning back into the thighs, rounding your back, kind of swallowing the belly up. And then pushing the heart forward, lifting it up through the arms. Last time like that, cat rounding, a little bit of a fall back. And cow pulling the heart through. Then just come to neutral spine. Take those same interlaced hands, that fist, and start to point it point it down. You're going to turn it down and then try to turn it in towards the heart and just do your best with this. At any point, if you need to undo the hands, just do them, but see how far you can get turning them all the way out again. Oh, and just pressing any amount forward with those interlaced hands and then release, release, shake them out. Take your palms face up, forearms down on the floor. And not exactly a cat cow, sort of like a jump rope with your spine. You're going to imagine the crown and the tailbone are the ends of the jump rope, the two people holding the jump rope. And your spine is going to go round like a jump rope, first going into cat, so rounding the back. And then push your rib cage over to one side, any side, and then let it drop, swing it through center, push it over to the other side. You get the idea? So you're making sort of a, a circle like a, a vertical circle with your rib cage. So do that a few times to one direction and then switch directions and jump rope your spine a few times the other way. And then we're going to work um, introducing the ourselves to the shoulders a little bit here. So keeping your arm as close to the floor as you can. Let's start with the left arm. Start to spiral it in. Try to keep the elbow as close to the floor as you can. See if you can make a big full circle with it. Just do your best, right? It might not look exactly like you planned it to look, but trying to keep elbow close to the earth and spiraling that arm around, change directions, spiral it the other way. 
And then you can keep that one, come back to stillness, take it back to starting point and do the right arm. Just turn it in. So you start to point the fingers towards the other arm and then see if you can spiral that arm around, staying close to the earth. Couple times that way. Couple times go the other way. And you know, everything I offer is always suggestion that you can interpret as you like. And then coming back to both palms facing up, forearms down. Let's take this back to a child's pose, but add the palms pressing together in a little prayer that tucks behind your head. You could bring your thumbs right to the base of your skull. Mm -hmm. and just for a few moments here, just a couple of breaths, just become like a, a great mountain lake. Let yourself spread out on the earth. Your water's clear. Feel the weight of your body on the earth, perhaps even delight in the weight of your body on this earth. And then come on up, back to hands and knees. Sit back onto your heels and do all that one more time. So standing on knees, arms open wide. And then a big embrace, wrap it up and round forward. Two more times, inhaling, you can open up and then wrap it up. And this time, so the last time here, as we do it, you'll have left arm on the bottom as you wrap your arms around yourself and coil in. And then making some version of eagle arms as you come to kneeling, twine your arms together to whatever degree you're able to. And then big sky circle, big circle, feeling your fingers trail through the molecules of air, perhaps. When you reach the end of that circle, change directions, circle yourself the other way, that's it. And then, you yeah, know, no rush, reach the top of that circle. You can undo the elbows, but just the wrists are crossed and the palms pressed together. And then, then taking a side bend, you choose whichever side you wanna to go to first, press the palms together, light the whole shape Come back through center and just gliding. Think about your body gliding over to the other side, gliding through space, your skin gliding on your fascia, your muscles gliding along each other. Come back up. Take the arms straight out in front of you, hands interlaced. Roll the wrists around a little bit each way. And then taking those kneeling cat cows here. So you kind of almost punch the fist forward as you lean back and round your back. And you can squeeze your fists even to help draw that heart up and through and lift and arch any amount. Go back to spinal flexion, lean back and round. Let your legs really be sturdy and hold you up. And then spinal extension, lift the heart through one more time each direction, a rounding and a leaning, and then pulling and a blossoming open, and then just relax the spine, point your knuckles down, point them in. It gets easier with time, reach it forward any amount, at any point, if you have to let go, you let it go. Otherwise you can reach, reach, reach. You could even try to rock the fists around here too, a little harder. And then let the arms go, give them a little shake. And then placing forearms down. Forearms down, palms up, jump rope spine. Jump rope spine and just change direction at will. And also please do you here. So adding anything that might need to be added. You can look around, you can move your hips more. You could do anything your spine is craving. Hmm. Cultivating inner space and freedom. And then we'll come to neutral spine and take one arm and just dance it around in a few circles. A couple times each way, you can change directions at will, move anything else that wants to move. You could try it with a fist. Try the other side. Which side feels more glidey? 
Mm -hmm. And coming back to forearms down, sit your hips back towards your heels, touch the palms together, bring that prayer back behind the head, and just let yourself descend, encourage every cell of you just to fall towards the floor and to find that intimate contact with the earth again. and climb on up to all fours and we'll move on and build our little Saturday dance together. So you can come up to downward facing dog, go ahead and curl your toes. And as you come into down dog, imagine like, I know we're on, you know, floors or carpets or mats or whatever, but imagine it's like a garden, you're in soil and you can grab fistfuls of that soil with your hands and you could feel your toes kind of curling as if each toe could pick up a little tiny bundle of soil. So really connecting with that feeling of earth underneath you and then bringing the breath in like the wind. It's the antidote, you know, it's the antidote to information, to Facebook, to over, you know, too many screens, just nature, feel the breath connect you to nature, feel your hands and feet connect you to nature and all the beings in it. Breathe the breath that the birds just breathed out. Breathe the breath that the trees are helping make for you. And then roll from dog into plank and back a few times. So just kind of rippling out through the spine to plank and then riding it back into downward dog. Ripple your way out. And then ride it back and do that one last time. You're going to ripple out to plank and stay in the plank this time. Lower really slowly all the way down to the ground. And when you get there, stretch your right arm out long alongside your ear. Push with your left hand, roll onto your right side. Bend your elbow on the ground and hold your head up and then reach your left leg up into the air. Hold on wherever you can. Some might be the toe, some might be the calf, anywhere, anywhere between the toe and the hip. You just grab hold and give it a little draw in, but focus also on what's holding you. Holding you, feel the ground. Feel your right baby toe anchored down. Feel that whole side body hold you up. You're gonna roll onto the back into a half happy baby. So you can let that right arm drop and just spill onto your back, bending the left knee. And if you need to bend your right knee too, go for it. Make this fit you, okay? So the right knee can be bent or straight. You could rock a little bit, sort of snuggle your way into it until you find that Goldilocks spot where it feels like, hmm, I can make a home here for a breath or two. And then let your waters clear again. Mm. You're gonna turn this into a twist. You can let go of that foot. Bring your right hand to your left knee. Cross it over the body, over the midline, over to the right. Just a big morning pendiculation, kind of a oh, yawning, stretchy business. And then take your arms, bring them up alongside your ears so that you can roll right over onto your belly. Keep your left knee bent. And so we're asymmetrical cobra here with one leg that's almost like a frog. Pull your hands underneath you, wiggle your heart open. And as you come up any height, any amount into cobra, but look over your right shoulder, turning. Maybe you see your right foot, maybe you even see your left foot. And then come back to the middle and look over your left shoulder. And same thing, you're looking for left foot, maybe even the right foot. And then come back to center and just lay it all down. Slide that left leg back to meet the right leg. Push up to hands and knees. Downward facing dog. We'll do just like that. That's the beginning of our dance. So we'll do that on the other side. So dog to plank and dog to plank a few times. And seeing if you could cultivate that sense of gliding of all your tissues gliding against each other, of your bones just swimming inside a sea of tissues in your body. And then the next time you arrive in plank, stay in plank. Go really slowly all the way to the floor 
And when you get there, you can send your left arm out alongside your ear so that you can push over onto the left side body, bend your elbow, hold your head, right leg goes up and you just catch it wherever you can hold on to. That's it. And then that'll turn, you just kind of keep spilling onto your back and come into the half happy baby. As you come into half happy baby, your right leg is up in the air and you're holding on to the foot or the ankle or wherever. You're making it work for you. You can rock a little bit until you find that perfect spot to rest. And really do just for, even just for one breath, just let your muscles not be in charge for a moment. Let your bones be heavy. And then change taking your left hand to your right knee. Bring it across the body. Spill your way into that twist, kind of yawn it open. And then keep going, keep spilling all the way onto your belly. And you got the right leg bent like a frog, hands underneath the shoulders, pluck your heart up. Turn, look over the left shoulder. Come back through center and look over the right shoulder. As you come back to center, lay it down, drape yourself down, slide the right leg back. Come up to all fours at any point, you know, if you need a cat, a cow, a wiggle, a shake, you take it and then take it back into downward facing dog. And we're going to build on that and add some fun things to it. So once you arrive in down dog, Grip the floor again, feel the soil. Imagine the soil underneath you. Imagine you've got roots that go right, plumb straight down through the crust of the earth and every layer right down to its hot molten center. You're connected. Ripple out into plank just one time. Just ripple it forward, lower it all the way down to the floor. And then just like before, when you get to the ground, stretch your right arm out long, push over onto your right side body and hold your head up in your right hand. Reach your left leg high and you just hold whatever you can hold on there. If you wanna add a little extra challenge to this one, you can try picking up your bottom leg a few inches off the ground and see if you can hover. Then you gotta be really grounded through that right side body, pelvis, rib cage. Put the bottom leg down if you were floating, fall onto your back and bend the left knee, half happy baby. Hmm. And change, take the twist, right hand to left knee, drag it across the body, spread out. Oh, take the arms up by your ears so that you can roll over that right shoulder onto your belly. Gather the hands in place for cobra. Peel the chest up. Turn, look over the right shoulder. So here's where we're going to add on. As you turn and look over the left shoulder, you're going to keep turning in that direction. You kind of climb your hands back a little bit. Keep turning your upper body until you turn all the way around to face the back and come into half Gomukhasana. So you're facing the other side of your space, bottom leg long, right leg long, left leg folded on top. Any amount of forward fold here, a little bit or a lot, whatever you've got. How's your jaw? Check in, jaw, cheeks, teeth, tongue. The whole landscape of you kind of Bring your attention across all the different landscapes of your body, the hills, the valleys, inner world, outer world, and just look for anywhere that there's resistance, there's gripping. And then as you come on up from there, you can turn your upper body back to the right, place your right hand back at the top of your space. You're gonna step on your left foot, it's pointing away from you, and come into a variation of side plank here. Lift your hips up. So kind of a kickstand side plank. You can take the left arm and bring it over your ear and then just stretch from right foot to left fingertips like you're just infinite, like you're the universe, just ever expanding, every molecule 
of you moving away from every other molecule all at once. And then slowly turn that into down dog to the front of your space again. You can bring the left arm down, step the left leg back, paddle it out for a moment. And then just one time, roll it out into plank, glide into plank. And then slow motion all the way to the floor. You're gripping the ground on the way down with your fingers and toes. Stretch your left arm out long, push onto the left side body. Right leg goes up and you hold where you hold. That's it. You could try lifting the bottom leg and floating and seeing if you can balance. Always like total wobble city there. And then put it down, turn that into half happy baby. Just fall onto your back, bending that right knee, holding on, bringing that thigh somewhere a little bit down towards the floor. Little rock side to side until you settle in. Let your bones exhale. And then take that into the twist. Bring your left hand over to your right knee. Drag it across, spill out into just a big, soft, sweet, welcoming twist. And then keep going until you're on your belly and you're in that asymmetrical cobra. And as you come into asymmetrical cobra, what leg do you have? Bent? You have your right leg bent, right? Hang on, let me make sure I've got it right. Yeah. You're gonna come into asymmetrical cobra, look over your left leg, left shoulder. <laughs> and look over your right shoulder. Walk the hands back a little bit. Keep turning, looking over that right shoulder until you face the back of your space or get there, however you get there. Folding the right leg across over the left leg and taking a forward bend here. If you like rocking, I think the body likes rocking, seems like, right? Sometimes a little bit of a side to side kind of wobble is a really friendly way to introduce your body to a pose. Hmm. So as you come up from this one, you're going to step on that right foot and reach your left hand to the front of your mat. So turning to the left, plant the hand. Right foot steps down, it's facing away from you. And then that modified side plank lifting up, arms stretching like crazy over the head. And then turning your nose towards the floor, bringing your right hand down, step the right leg back and arrange yourself in a downward dog. Shake it out a bit. Breathe into your bones, feel the earth beneath you. Take a break if you need to. And we'll do it all one more time, adding on some fun things at the end. So roll it out to plank. Lower the plank all the way down to the ground. Right arm long, push over onto your side body and hold your head. Reaching left leg up, you might hold the toe or anywhere else. You could try a little bonus round here to pick up the bottom leg. And also stretch your right arm out. And maybe you could even pick up your right shoulder and arm and try to balance like that. <sighs> and then turn that into half happy baby on your back. So left knee is bent. And you could very happily stay in your version of half happy baby. But if you wanted to, you could also start to bring that left foot with two hands. You could bring it in towards your heart. So it's like a pigeon on your back. You might even get the foot into your elbow and your knee into the other elbow and try to peek over your shin at your bottom foot. So any variation, anywhere in between that, anything that you might make up, finding some shape that suits you for another breath. And then turn that into the twist. Take the knee with the right hand, drag it across. Just keep on spilling, right? One note, just sort of Musically bleeding into the neck, onto the belly, hands under shoulders, asymmetrical cobra look over the right shoulder. Hmm. Look over the left shoulder, and this time you keep going all the way around until you face the back. Left knee folded over, right leg fold your way over that leg situation. 
As you come up from here, turning back towards the front, right hand to the front of your space, step on the left foot. Here's where we're going to change it a little bit, come back into that side plank. This time we're going to sort of collapse in on ourselves and then open again. You can bend your right knee, pull your left elbow in, try to make yourself the tiniest little package, and then open back to where you were. A couple times like that, draw the elbow in, you could make a fist, you're bending that bottom leg, and open. The last time, bend, bend, bend. This time, sit yourself down. So maybe you end up like a seated twist situation here. And if you don't, you can just get here if it didn't work out exactly like that. So bottom leg is bent, top leg is stepped over it. You could drop your left hand behind you, raise the right arm up. Mighty sail to catch the wind, breathe in well. And then twist, you could use the elbow, but try not to be too much of a a bully to your body, but let it really be organic. Maybe your skin could stay a little soft in this twist. I know sometimes personally, I get in a twist and suddenly my skin gets kind of hard and bossy. So soft face, soft skin. And then come on back to center, bring your hands and just interlace them over your heart. Look at that left foot and see if you could pick it up just an inch and just hover it. And then maybe just one more inch. And I know this is not easy, so just do your best with this. I'm right there with you. It's hard. One more inch. How high can you pick that left foot up without your back doing this, right? The whole situation sort of crumpling. Keep the dignity in your spine. And then slowly, you're going to open that left leg out to the left side. Keep the knee bent. And just turn that leg in as much as you're able to. And then bring it back without touching the ground, without touching the right leg. Start to pull it back where it came from. Just hovering that leg over the bottom one. How far to the right can you pull that left leg? And one more time. Take it around to the left. Keep it bent. Turn it in. This time you're going to place it behind your right foot. So placing your left knee, left leg down right behind your right foot. So you end up in this sort of pinwheel position. And then once you get there, walk your hands around to the right so that you twist your body, twist your torso. And then your variation. So I'll show you some options here with this one, this deer pose. See, so maybe it's enough to be right here. If you're feeling a lot of sensation, you're good. Otherwise, you could walk your arms out. You might put your elbows down. Or what I like to do is bend one arm, bending here the left arm to put the forehead down on it and stretch the right arm out long. If you need props, you could gather a pillow or anything else to put underneath you. Hmm. Feel all the parts of you that touch the ground here. And let them descend. Let your bones get a little heavier. How do your bones feel? Breathe into them. Imagine them turning on like antennas. Start to curl yourself back up, palms pressed down to lift the chest. And nothing too fancy, just sort of spill over onto your belly here. And you should end up facing the front again, I hope. As you come onto your belly, come into Sphinx Pose. Put your elbows down on the floor. And as you come into Sphinx, add a little cat-cow, alternately extending and flexing the spine in your Sphinx Pose. And you could do that just like we are, or if you wanted to add some challenge to it, you could tuck your toes under, come into forearm plank, and do little cat cows here. It's no joke. <laughs> just a couple, and then put it all down again. Press up through all fours, hands and knees. Give your spine a little wag around and then we'll do our last roll through that sequence of climbing into your down dog 
gather the earth in your hands and under your toes, breathe in the air, breathe in the same breath that the birds and the bears are breathing in and out, connecting. Bring your mind down into your body and bring your body up into your mind. Roll out just once into plank pose and then slow motion, take it all the way down to the floor. Stretch the left arm up by your ear, roll onto your left side. You scoop up that right leg, reach it high. And the option to float the bottom leg or even to stretch out that left arm and to try to float it. Pick up the left arm and shoulder off the ground. Move your sacrum into your body, move your navel into your body. And then let that go, come onto your back. Either half happy baby or pigeon on the back. You could start to bring that right foot towards your heart, one hand or two hands. Lots of ways to do it. You could try scooping your arms like a forklift underneath your right calf. You could wrap your arms in a hug around the foot and the knee. You could pick your head up, try to look over that shin to see your left toes. And then turn that carefully into your twist. So let go of that pigeon or that happy baby. Bring the left hand to your right knee as you carry it across. Let all your limbs just splay out. <sighs> Twisting right over onto your belly. Coming to that half frog, cobra, hands back, peeled heart up. First looking over your left shoulder. Brush. So you can look over the right shoulder and keep looking until that pulls you all the way around facing the back of your space and hopefully we end up with one leg long and the other leg folded on top of it if you have that leg. You know, you know which leg you're on. <laughs> so leg crossed over, forward fold. And then as you come up, turning back towards the front, planting left hand, stepping on right foot, coming into this side plank, and then adding that sort of crumpling, bending the bottom knee, pulling the elbow in, get small, and then expand again. Like a supernova star, you gotta collapse in on yourself so that you can then get even brighter. Just opening up like a big fiery star. One more time, pull it in this time. Pull it all the way in to sit down. And so you're arranged somehow, hopefully you get to where the right leg is stepped over the left leg and you can drop the right hand behind you, raise the left arm high, fill your sails and then turn. Your jaw here, all the places where you normally hold your stuff. How's it doing? As you come back around, the hands can find the heart, just a little interlace, like a little, it's called Vajra Pradama, unshakable trust mudra over your heart, and you're looking at that right foot. See if you can pick it up just an inch, two inches. Couple more, see how high you can get it. Answer might be not very high, that's about as high as mine goes. And then start to take that leg out to the right side, keep the knee bent, turn the whole leg in. And bring it back around in front, try to cross it over without touching. And then last time, come back around, turn the leg in. You're gonna place that right leg just behind the left foot, turning your body to the left, coming into this deer pose. So you can take a shape that fits you. You might put the forearms down. You might bend the right arm and lay your head on it. It's good timing, the FedEx guy just came here and he's gonna bang on the door in a second. So you all can just rest for one breath and I'll be right back. Hi. All good, good morning. Morning. Yeah. You're here. Okay, Have thanks. a beautiful day. Hi. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Another breath here, let your bones drape, skin soft. 
And then as you come on up, climbing up from that one and just kind of finding your way to spill back onto your front side. That workout, kind of turning back towards the front of your space, lay it out on your belly. And this time you can take a bow pose, bending knees. If you reach the ankles, you could grab them. If not, you just reach in their direction. It both was both perfect. <laughs> And then lifting up, trying to bring the inner thighs and knees a little closer and feeling that soft part of the belly that you could rock on in a little bit. And what about a little side to side? Could you imagine rocking side to side here? And you might imagine that so much that it happens and you rock all the way over onto one side. If it doesn't happen, don't worry. You could stay in regular bow and then you could come back if you rocked over and then you could rock all the way to the other side. And then come on back. And before you let it go, I know it's tempting, you wanna just be done, but see if you can float the whole thing up, all your molecules, every cell moving away from every other cell, everything floating up and out. One last inhale and then gently Put it down like a little butterfly landing on a flower. Slowly come down. You could let your butt go side to side. You're gonna shake it off or windshield wiper your feet. Mm. And then just go ahead and just flip right around onto your back. Come onto your back and set up like a bridge with your feet under your knees, your arms by your side. Then you could lift out just one time, lift the hips up, a regular bridge, feel it reach the peak and then let it melt back down. And then bring your legs all the way together. So your knees touch, your inner thighs squeeze together, your inner edges of your feet coming together, but the soles still pressing down flat and come into a little narrow bridge. Lift your pelvis up, try to squeeze your thighs together. And now stay there, let your knees open, keep pressing the whole sole of both feet down. Lift your tailbone a tiny bit more and bring your knees and thighs back together, squeeze them in. DIY thigh master. One more time, let the knees open, let your tailbone just a little bit more. Squeeze your thighs together, put the whole thing down. Supta Baddha Konasana, so bottoms of the feet together, let your knees open. Mm. Keep your legs like that. Press into the pinky toe edges of your feet to lift your hips up, so a wide Supta Baddha bridge. And then like you're just sort of steering your pelvis in space, let your right knee come a little closer to the ground, left knee come a little more up into the sky, steer your pelvis to the right. And then back through center, tailbone a little bit higher, steer your, steer your pelvis to the left. Come back to center before you put it down, lift everything up just a little more, just one little more puff of breath to lift it up and then slowly put it all back down, back to Supta Baddha, just for a moment. You could put your hands on your thighs if that feels okay, or on your body, belly, and heart. And then taking one final back bend of your choosing here, which could be a bridge, a simple bridge. You could like to stay here if you're very happy, you could do the imaginary back bends and just lie here in Supta Baddha. But if you feel like you wanna wheel, you could set up your palms by your ears, but really thinking about how to do it with a light touch. So as you do go into your back bend, whichever one you might choose, do it with such a light and lovely touch with just as much tenderness as effort. And you come into it whenever you reach that fullest expression of yours let your skin soften and let every molecule of you move away from every other one one more time and then when you come down super gentle oh, i love naked babies <laughs> 
<laughs> this is the best. Come on down. And you could either windshield wiper the knees or you could give yourself a hug, knees into the chest, whatever would soothe you for a couple of breaths here. Coming back up, hugging the knees in. You could rock over to one side and up to sit, or you could just rock straight up. If you want to turn around so you can see me, definitely. If you haven't yet, you could. And so if you have two blocks or a pillow or something, I'll show you this. I've been liking this a lot lately, is to use the two blocks on their short side end to end. So it's like one long block and put them underneath the knees, sort of um, not, not below, but almost like at the very top of the knees, kind of by the backs of the thighs. And then knees are bent, heels are on the ground, you can see. And then taking the arms underneath and bringing the forearms to the blocks and then letting the feet slide away until the thighs really press down on the arms the back is rounded sweetly, the head can drop. And so that's just one offering. If you don't like this variation, I'm so not offended at all. You can take a regular, simple seated forward fold. You could use the props for your head if you like, in any setting. But um, just do, I have been really loving this sort of tucked in, give yourself a hug version. So where are you working that you could maybe work a little less? Maybe there are certain parts of you that have just been like in the on switch, moving from muscle and brain and forehead. <laughs> you might just turn those off. Feel your body start to occupy. All the parts that touch the earth, may they descend, may they make intimate contact with the breath. You might imagine the feeling of it touching the inner lining of your skin, allowing the muscles in the skin to not stick to each other so much, but to glide along each other's surface. return, you could roll your way back up. If you had the blocks underneath you, you could just put them off to the side, lean back onto your hands and bend your knees and just let your knees windshield wipe your side to side. Mm -hmm. And one last forward fold here, a wide-legged version. So take your mat. Legs open, doesn't have to be crazy wide, you know, just enough. You could use your props if you like to lean on blocks or put your head on blocks, you could, or you could just keep it simple, just going down through the middle. This is um, Mary Oliver. She says, every year we've been witness to it, how the world descends into a rich mash in order that it may resume. And therefore, who would cry out to the petals on the ground to stay, knowing, as we must, how the vivacity of what was is married to the vitality of what will be. The vivacity of what was is married to the vitality of what will be. You can start to slowly walk yourself back in, gather the knees in, and take your time coming to a, a 
sweet resting place. So for Shavasana, you might put on extra clothing, you might curl up on your back or your side or your belly, or you could even toss your legs up over a couch or a chair if you felt inspired to. <clears throat> up well, you deserve rest. And as you snuggle and settle in, feeling into the parts of you that touch the earth. Where are the lowest parts? Where would the water of you pool? Feel those places and let them get really heavy. Pour your awareness like liquid into the right side of your body and let the right side get soft and heavy. Pour your awareness like flowing sensors into the left side of your body. The left side gets soft and heavy. Feel the midline, let the midline empty its weight. The whole back of your body, soft and heavy. And the whole front, let the front of you melt down towards the back of you. the weight of your body on the earth and let it be soft and spread out. Feeling again your back, body, and the places where you touch the earth. And feeling the front of your body facing the space around you. As you breathe, let the breath grow and imagine expanding out into the space around you. Feeling your body change shape as you breathe. Let your eyes blink or your head rock gently from side to side just to wake up in the bioelectricity. Feel the tuning fork of your skin start to come alive. Breathing 
into your bones, feel your bones. Take all toes and fingers or take a big stretch. And I invite you if you want to stay in a longer Shavasana, you don't have to get up. If you do want to come up, you can start to climb your way up to sit. Bringing it all full circle, snuggling into the ground beneath you. Eyes can be closed or just soft. Hands on your heart or body somewhere. Breathing into the air bones and the 14 generations of ancestors that live in your bones. Mm. And we can make a promise, an intention, a vow to be the best ancestor that we can be for the 14 generations that will have us in their bones, at least 14 that we know of. And to be good caretakers of this land that we sit on, this community we're a part of. You want to join me? We can chant together one last om, breathing in. Oh. Thanks, thank you so much.